We are still in phase A. We've had just a few of the encounters. And as we continue in phase A, we're going to flip a car to see if we can get out of phase A. I still got that death warrant coming at me. And I got the judgment card. Now, this would be a judgment card in encounters. So let's read then the encounter says a judgment encounters the players have the option to change the setting from to King's Highway or Sea Lanes. Hmm. Yeah, I probably want to uh, do a King's Highway. How about if we get up to this bridge here? And for a moment, I'm going to go into uh, uh, taverns where I'm going to go and get off the vessel. I'll leave the vessel into uh, uh, my second in command, the NPC to have it. And I'm going to take a tavern over in Russia or maybe on the French side, maybe on the Russian side, who knows? And I'm gonna take the next encounter as if it's on land because if I look at my character sheet here, there's a lot of things that are going on that the next encounter on land, since I already have that mutiny in actions to see, a land encounter would be good. I'm also trying to reform the church and push it in one of the three directions, either to persecution, to some sort of inquisition, or to some sort of outright reform at J. Never call a dog over to beat it. I was on the border between Bavaria and France, waiting for my <laughs> lascivious turn, a bed and a tub to open up at the brothel. I felt a poke to my side, the barrel of a pistol. The voice of the holder scolded me for letting my guard down. I whispered to my assailant, if you had waited another ten minutes, I would have been nude, not holding a dagger to your own crotch. I embraced my arm around the pistol ear. Walter Morvan was a longtime co-conspirator. We had grown up stealing first from our fellow grammarians, then from the shopkeeps, and finally from the constables. Never from the priests. To be young and naive, the priests were the only ones carrying true coin. And Morvan, you've changed little. Still trying to grow mutton chop sideburns, I see. To keep the ladies from closing their legs, no doubt. After the simple courtesy, I broached the immediate subject, yet knowing my old chum, Walt, may be a spy for the other side. Have you seen the Lady Josephine? Pale of face, shaved of brow, travels with a pet ermine. Interesting you should ask. He was being paid by the Archbishop of Nantes to look for her. That may put us on opposite sides, or at least competing interests. I noticed he had not yet removed the pistol from my rib. I adjusted my knife lower against his leg, where it might slice a main artery. I should have been a doctor with my knowledge of the insides of the human anatomy. He pocketed his firearm and nodded for me to step outside. <laughs> and lose my place in line? Hardly. Talk freely, nothing but scoundrels here. He looked about and a couple of the men next to us nodded. Eavesdropping will keep you alive. Gotrop. He has a glassworks in Nantes, and it's been vandalized. He's the Archbishop. That was part of his holdings. Everyone suspects the Russians, but... My friend Wall looked around and then at me with some discern. I smiled, bit a lip, and sheathed my knife. I'm working for Baron Leo of Marseille. Josephine is his daughter. He knew that already. I was all but certain. Such is the give and take of men who studied the craft of stealth. Wall continued to explain, My employer is tired of the crown, confiscating monastic holdings. He had rallied the pastors far and wide to preach and scold the king's impiety. So beloved our monarch wishes to be, said in court that slur might get one raped by bulls and quartered. He was judging my own loyalties. I had none. A cardinal, Richelieu, is now the king's favorite and the pulpits are more respectful. The Archbishop Gautrup thought he had been slighted. Maybe he wishes to find Josephine to curry favor with his own high lord, your Leo. The North is acknowledged less by the king in France. I nodded this could be. Next encounter? After the Judgment card? And it is the Hermit card? Hermit card is another Major Tarot. Let's read what the Major Tarot Hermit says. It says that uh, replay the last pair of cards that occurred in travel. If the phase has changed, this uh, may have a different situation. Well, it will have a different situation because it's gonna be on land. So let me see what the last two cards in play would have been. It's not gonna be the Hermit card. And the last two cards are going to be a nine and a knight. It's gonna be a personal event. So a personal event in the, um, in the land. So it's gonna be old world. And it's going to be, uh, and what was that? It was, uh, nine swords. 
Old World Sword. Ooh, sword inverted. Ugly, ugly card. Swords, uh, personal events of swords inverted. Those are just not pleasant. All right. You may find a chance to, uh, for some spirits. Wow. As I say, you know, Cutlass is just, it's just amazing how much things just actually work in the game system. I know it's, uh, it's harder to uh, write a game system that's going to cover everything about fantasy because uh, most some people's uh, fantasy whimsy is going to uh, slant one way and away or another, whether it's Arthurian knights or whether it's uh, a Tolkien uh, in battles or whether it's um, a Viking uh, esque uh, like uh, Chronicles of the Outlands. But you might enjoy some spirits. I will enjoy some spirits. I yes, I would. A difficult roll for a pirate's hunch. Let me see what my difficult roll here is. A pirate hunch, two dice, and I got a. 13 so i made the pirate hunch a difficult roll at my level of level two is is a 12 a 13 means my hunch is i know exactly what i need to do so if you said yes your character does not return to the mission that would go wow so i start to uh i start if i had failed that roll uh and i could have automatically uh i could have failed perhaps but uh i so what i'll do instead is that i'll notice with my spy skill that there was a trap aboard that both on the russian side i got i got some uh members of flambeau actually dealing with uh, uh anima dom back and forth so i got that intrigue aboard my vessel and with that of course what do we do whenever we make a roll we're going to check something. How about display of skills and savoir faire? Darling, pour me some ale. Provolone, a bland cheese melted on bread, does fill the stomach. I thought I had paid for richer cuisine, but I was not complaining. Every nation has a different favorite cheese. I pretended to fancy another helping, and en route, stormed toward the curtain dividing my chamber from another. The man spying on me had no time to retreat. A proper drubbing was delivered to his cheeks and shoulders, even as I dressed in between questions and slaps. As I sat on the man's back, his face squashed to the floor, I looked at the gal. Of course, she was paid to keep me busy. She rolled over and insisted that I give her a spank. Instead, I tied the couple back to back with the bed sheets and stuffed one of the girl's stockings in her mouth. The man I strangled unconscious with her other bit of scarlet hosiery. Or did I kill him? I am a rogue. Level two, and I got one make roll. And I have successfully checked uh, display of skills and savoir faire by making that roll uh, to spot with my spy skill that there was an ambush. And I'm still in, am I still in phase A? Wow, this is an amazing uh, sequence in phase A. A lot going on. As long as I'm checking in nobles, moving up in levels, I can get all the way to level eight just in this one adventure if enough were happening, but I doubt it, so. And we got a four. A four, the last event was what? A, uh, a, I think it was a sword. Let me go back here. And it's going to be that nine of swords. So it's going to be a sword and a four of the uh, rods. It's going to be an encounter number five and a rod sword. A rod and a sword are ruffians. Encounter number five is a highwayman. Well, guess what? Highwaymen come to attack me. They probably heard about, about that bounty on my life. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and, and take another chance here and pick up individual fighting and duels. And I'll check it in advance. I'll be optimistic. And I'm going to fight, um, I'm going to say that I'm going to have to escape. Now, we did that defensive before. We're going to try to do it again. I'm going to have to escape um, these guys that are coming to get me. I whistled half a measure of a shanty as I started downstairs. At the bar was a cadre of some serious enforcers. The headman's menace was written by God on his very face. His upper lip was cleft and prevented him from forming a friendly smile, even if he ever wanted to issue one. This was a fellow who spent a lifetime scaring children and small dogs. His uniform, King's Horse Guards, their company champion undoubtedly, a fine fencer and boxer. Pain was his singular sensation, enduring and inflicting. Not the kind of person you fight while wounded and overfed and weak of <laughs> loins. I mocked him as I glared. Can I at least know your name, darling? He seemed fully incensed by my request. How do I sprint past? That could lead him and his troopers back to the bell. 
I had allies in the house, yet most were as tired as I and how many could I afford to lose? The sensible thing was to return upstairs. Be nice if there was a convenient balcony overlooking a wagon full of hay. I may have to ponder my options to both player and Henri. I could escape into Bavaria, but many try to leave that country. The place hemorrhages refugees. The locals share only the common language, which includes a mixed heritage and a love for brick cheese. And uh, let me take a let me take a card. Strategy is gosh, gosh, tough. Uh, okay, well, let's take a card. Strategy first. And it's really tough, really tough set of events strategy. But let's uh, let's flip a card for strategy to see where that takes us, and then afterward we'll go defensive. Strategy may get may get us exactly out of the battle and from the get go. And it is a five. It is not a bane. A five strategy is going to be uh, engage more than your share, allowing comrades to coordinate their actions. Success and you or your allies gain plus two to rolls in the further battle. It's a roll of an eight, charismatic style. Now let me look. Do I? I think I have charismatic style. I do. I have the swaggering charismatic style. By having the swaggering charismatic style, I will roll three dice looking for an eight to get a permanent modifier of plus two in this battle. And I have made that roll, so now I'm plus two in this battle uh, as we go forward. The champions seemed to ascend the stairs five steps at a stride. I doubted there was an oak door in this establishment that would bar him. As I reached upstairs, I had a new plan. The hall below was two stories with hanging chandeliers. So inviting. The landing leading to the suite of rooms used by the house ladies barely had a proper railing. In a moment of impulse, I leaped and grasped, reminding me of Bushnik's orders on the fire ship. This time, my eyes were open. A few of the enemy kindly broke my fall at the opposite apex of my swing. Downstairs, I could see some of my ship companions being held in a side gallery. We were being herded, and that would not do. Was I to return to the bell minus my marines? I discharged my pistol and fell one guard, and pressed the fine distraction I provided, hoping rightly that some of my loyalists could eject their guards and escape out the windows. Did leave me on my own. Outside, I caught a glimpse of Walt being paid from a gloved hand from a fine blue velvet purse. <laughs> Good for him, bad for me. I saluted him with my empty gun. That's nice. So now we're going to go to the next step. And uh, I will flip the car. And it'll be a six. And it's going to be defensive. And the six defensive, it is a Bane six defensive. A Bane six, but I'm plus two in my dice. Deflect the charge of an opponent trying to force his way past you to, to the balcony or a higher ground. So he's trying to get upstairs for some reason, maybe to fail and the player may, uh, must recover by selecting a regular next round. If the player character is not state uh, trait stout, difficulty increases by four. Vantage brawler, I'm not a brawler. He came a 13, but I'm adding two. Uh, I mean, I add two to my dice roll. Let's see if I made that. No, I missed that roll, unfortunately. I'm not a brawler. I did not have the advantage. So I now just need to take an irregular card to get away. In retrospect, my retreat should have been directly outside and round about past sunset. Maybe I just wanted to try that swing again. It was rather fun. I was pursued from below and did air to recall that the man-giant was already where I intended to go. Maybe all would pause and discuss this over a frothy drink. I was ready for one. I was cornered on the stair, empty pistol and no sword. I dropped my ornate knife and held my hands out to surrender. No hard feelings. I would miss owning that dagger, but it did incite envy. So let me take that irregular card to get away. I'm still at plus two because the strategy. It is a king. A king probably is not going to hurt me too much as an irregular card. And a king irregular says, treat him like an angry dog, call an op opponent, challenging him with charge, or baiting him with a tasty offer as he does tackle him. Success and knock out the opponent. Now that would be the same as getting the escape here. Sorry, I would. I meant to try to run away. I did the strategy to kind of protect the friends I was traveling with, but suddenly I have the ability to knock out the, it is an eight on two dice, attract fire. I can pick up a swaggering as well. Two dice, adding two to the dice, it is a 12, becomes a 14. I have picked up the swaggering, attract fire.
The champion wanted to be the one to arrest me. Nobles always expect obedience, his mistake. As he stepped down to close, bending to grab the ornate knife, I buckled him at the knees and lifted him up and over my head. He would vault below, smack onto his fellow orange bow legs. Was the best throw of nine pins I believe I have ever made. Wish I had a bet on the line. And we have completed that encounter, which gave us our individual fighting and duels. Moving right along, still in phase A. You gotta be kidding me, phase A. And here comes the moon card. What has been happening in here? I changed settings. I had all sorts of things happen. Nothing really permanent, though. A moon card in the phase B or C disgrace. If in the epilogue or phase A, treat this card instead as a knave. So a knave. I get my first knave coming in. Now, who's the rival Gabriel? So all this commotion, I knocked that first guy out. But now we've got a situation where uh, uh, Gabriel shows up. Now, I'm going to try to get my individual, uh, my conflict of arms here. Now, I could also do my personal risk and audacity by taking a, um, a battle. Well, I'll continue this individual battle, and I'll go for my personal risk and audacity out of it. I see Gabriel, and I recognize him. Hey, I know you. Gabriel, hey. I see you bought some new clothing. Well, he's going to be mad at that. Gabriel, <laughs> a man of means and distinction. I waved and held out my hand for a shake. I stepped toward him over the bodies of his fallen men. My foot caught on the jaw of his company champion. The easy, unnatural swivel caught Gabriel's eye. I did not need to look down to know that the man's neck had snapped. Well, I could only be hanged once. I armed myself with a polished handgun on the floor. So let me take a card on Brash. Do I still have the plus two from before? No, nope. I flip that event card, and that usually is going to uh, reset all of the uh, situation. But I will take, I'll take a calculated action this time. Here comes my card flip, and uh, a nine, a nine calculated. Uh, nine calculated. Fire your pistol and miss, but victim lingers too long, laughing at me, uh, checking himself for wounds. Oh, this guy is so fun to play with. Uh, perhaps allowing you to reload and fire a new success and dispatch one opponent. Well, it will be a dispatch. I'll probably just capture him. But it's a seven on two dice to pick up another swaggering automatic reload. Two dice. And I picked up automatic reload, and I captured Gabriel. The gun misfired. Of course. The former owner was cold cocked, so I might have suspected the bullet was tamped loose when he dropped the firearm. Some of the other pistols actually discharged into walls and stairs. In court, I might be able to argue that the champion was in truth slain by accidental discharge from his companions, <laughs> like I'd ever see court. Gabriel was the only authority present. He heard my gunshot and flinched. He checked himself for wounds. I doubted he ever killed anyone. Most lords had not. Still, had he ever even swung his sword? He didn't seem to have the instinct to run. His was pure of mind and heart and figure. Perfect specimen of my superior, bred to be entitled. He may never have imagined that God would let him die in any other way but gallantly. He certainly was not going to smudge his uniform with another man's blood. He had minions, or he did ten minutes ago. <laughs> He's sort of a, a few pennies light in the purse. Ah, guess what? I took his purse, but I can only check really one ignoble for this action. And I have not checked anything yet. I will take his purse. I'll take his purse. I will take his purse. I will take his, uh, I will take his boots as well this time. I will take his uniform. I will take his purse. And I will take his boots. <laughs> two for two. Two for two, Gabriel. There was a, I'm, I actually made this character, Gabriel, the, uh, the uh, son or the grandson of another uh, guy, uh, Tordenson, uh, that uh, I know at least one viewer will, will know that this is a, this is a very, very uh, apropos thing to uh, be torturing uh, this guy. Uh, so uh, it skips a generation. I had poor Gabriel naked, which delighted the ladies of the parlor. Adieu, adieu. Should I restrain him? Striking his shoulder blades leave him unconscious. Ladies, enjoy. He's rich and handsome. The Major wasn't dangerous without his retainers. He would be kept a willing prisoner until more of his servants arrived. What was his other choice? The local coppers moonlighted at the brothel and were already picking the pockets of his unconscious henchmen.
River towns on a border are the best <laughs> recreation. I beat that. And they came around that um, that nine card that came up, and here comes my next flip of the card. A knight. And the knight card. Minor person who comes along that I get an, an agent. You know, this will probably, since we already know that Cardinal Richelieu is involved, we're going to have an agent approach us, and uh, this will simply be uh, a personal growth for me in that I'm also going to hate the monarch. Because this guy is going to treat me very condescending. He's going to, uh, let's give, we should give him a name. Let's see if we got him. We'll make him an archbishop approach, isn't me. I reached the point in the river where the bell was docked just around the first bend past the town. We were far past the last bridge and the river was growing more narrow and shallow. I was the last one back aboard but still made the rendezvous time. The vessel had anchored near the French side and I had to pay a penny from Gabriel's purse to gain ferry across from Bavaria. I ordered the launch of jolly boats to tow us upstream. The wind was too light against the current. The Bell's sailors looked at me with anger. What now? The headcount of my loyal marines numbered all present and accounted for. Sailors too, no one was missing. Bushnik belayed that order and reported that I had a visitor, in my cabin no less. Put the tart ashore, he wagged a finger and followed me into parlay. There was one man alone in my stateroom, flipping through my charts and logbook. I had not met Archbishop Gautrup of Nantes. I recognized the finely dressed priest from gloved hands and a fine blue velvet purse left conspicuously on the table. Yes, I nearly forgot about him. He sat in my chair at my end of my table, only standing after I declined to sit. He might have agreed to share the search for Josephine. The purse was not a peace offering. He collected the contents and jangled it as a temptation. The man reeked of condescension. I knew Ushnik wanted him gone before a cargo search was ordered. I pondered cutting his throat and waiting the body. Others would know he was aboard. There were certainly Catholics in the crew. Gottrip did not ask questions nor accuse. He matter-of-factly told me that I was a peon. He owned my fealty and Baron Leo's. If I ever hoped to raise my station, I needed connections built through a chain of obedience. His was to Cardinal Richelieu, and Richelieu had the ear of the king. The king represented God's will on earth. He would entreat no argument otherwise. Gottrip suggested I return to Nantes and there attend university. Sounded like volunteering to enter a madhouse. He might write me a letter of introduction. La di da. One hand washes the other, he said. A strange statement for a man wearing gloves. I'd seen the poor and starving of Paris. Was that God? Or the king or a cardinal that wanted church lands protected? Any of the eight rings Gottrip wore could be sold to feed an orphanage for the entire winter. He undoubtedly would see that as a waste. God decided when orphans perish. My answer was to offer no answer, but Gottrip would certainly see our boat leave south the wrong way after he stepped back ashore. He extended his bejeweled ring hand which several sailors stooped to kiss. The sign of the cross blessed each potential traitor. There was not much he could do here. With the river mouth near Nantes dangerous, that mess of a state of Bavaria offered a reasonable escape. Ah, Bavaria. A place to regularly avoid, where every crossroad had thugs empowered by kinship or fealty to one of several tyrants. Most of the counties roiled in civil unrest and religious war. How quaint, how ignoble. And he says that uh, uh, we're aware of your actions. We know of your sins with your... Uh, stepsister, uh, or no, your half-sister, uh, Josephine, uh, nothing is proven there. I'm uh, the bastard son of somebody from Marseille, it doesn't necessarily be the Baron, I'm probably just flattering myself is what I'll say about that. And I'm gonna, after he gets the threat, he tells me to drop this mission or else. Well, it's or else, there's always or else. Uh, everyone's always saying or else. I get to check another noble from that. I am still heading down the road, I should say the whale road, heading down the river. I'll get back on the boat now at this point. 
Did I get my conflict of arms yet? I don't, but I always get off the boat uh, to get conflict of arms. But let's uh, let's continue down the road. We've had this uh, night encounter rather than have that um, uh, knave encounter, and we'll play the double role if you ever get two knights or two knaves in any phase. A two, I think a two finally advances the phase on me. Let's uh, let's take a look and see if that's the case. Two is uh, opposition to commencement. In uh, twos represent opera. In phase A, uh, when the two is inverted, treat as a queen. But it's also inverted. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be treated as a knave, and uh, this reflects the uh, initial unpreparedness. I'm going to resolve this uh, this uh, conflict on my own shift, in that I'm going to uh, they're they're going to come forward. Some of the men, the 23 versus the 25 men, and they're going to they're going to you know poke me in the chest and say you know you need to get off this boat right now, head home to Marseille, lick your wounds, lap dog, and uh, go back there and heal. And, uh, of course, I'm not going to take well to that. The hull scraped a shoal, making a wretched cry. Add the river to the enemies I was making faster than friends. Powerful enemies to boot, the river included. The sailors were restless once again. They knew the moment was arriving to dump cannon or set cargo ashore. What choice would I command? The decision was obvious to me, but I had already been told that my logic was asinine. Gottrop said as much. No man was to disobey his superior. Now my sailors were being asked of that too. I could set them all ashore, but they needed the boat, and the boat needed them. I could depart, but the boat was now faster than even Gabriel's horsemen. The winds blowing north to south allowed us to tack back and forth across the wide river run. Yet for how much longer if we did not change our draft? The marines were on one side, atop the quarterdeck, the sailors had gathered at the ship's wheel. Das Kappas and the Mark of the Freemasons represented an egalitarian order where wealth trumped lineage. If my patron was any other man than Lord Leo, or shall I say any noble except Lord Leo, I might have changed plots. But I needed to find Josephine and ensure she was safe. I felt an affection and kinship for her. The Archbishop would not approve of that either. A fight started even as Ushnik was nowhere to be seen. So I'm going to take my 23 men, I'm going to fight their 25 men in a brawling clash. So, let me go in a brawling clash. And of course, brawling clash, if I win. Uh, at the the um, conflict of arms, military battles and strategy is the only ignoble where you actually have to succeed. Well, uh, the display skills of Savoy Fair, you, you need to make a roll there as well. But those two, uh, uh, the others, I could I could go into a ship battle and totally uh, lose and go into the digressions and, and the action before that digression I could check an ignoble for. But let me uh, let me do my brawling fray here. There's a table in the game. There's always a table in the game, but brawling fray is a nice one. It's a uh, it's not bad for the player himself, Brawling Frey. It tends to uh, take wreak havoc on his uh, his men. I'm at 23 versus a 25. So if I lose this battle, I could lose command of the ship and I could be just relegated either to uh, moving along or um, by myself in small company or I would have to uh, uh, travel as an NPC. But Brawling Frey, flipping the card. Let's see if I can get a good one. I still gotta make one. And it is a ten of coins. Uh, again, in the larger battles like uh, Conflict of Arms, uh, Bloody Clash, uh, there are no banes. Uh, the banes mix in. A ten on brawling. Inspire the men to attack with a passion. Fighting for honor, loot, and survival. Opponent has half a D8 men locked unconscious. The player loses a full D8. Uh, success in the brawl, en the brawl ends. I retake control of my, my ship. Now, I lost seven men. And uh, these are these are probably uh, uh, knocked unconscious. So I, I do just for the moment. I'm still going to be at 23 and 25 after the battle. So will they? Some of them will convert over to mine. But I lost seven. Means I'm going to be down to a 16 total. And they lost half a D8. And they lost three. So they're at 22. 16 versus 22. But success here in the brawl ends. If the card is inverted cup, a fail roll means I'm knocked unconscious. No, it's an inverted coin. It is a 12 and it is rabble rouser. Interesting choice here. I just picked up rabble rouser as a skill last level. I know I am not cheating. I do not uh, uh, see the future, but I do know cutlass, not just because I wrote the game, but I know certain skills like rabble rouser and briber. Uh, they may not seem like the, uh, the most uh, pirate-esque 
type of skills, but they they appear a lot in the tables. Uh, there's a few others. I, you might have heard me mention Brawler uh, at least once. Equestrian comes up, and a Fencer, of course. These things are just, you know, when you go up levels, you got to be careful what you pick. You can have a nice, well-rounded character and get that architect ship right or decide you want to be a pickpocket. You're just not going to see those appear as advantages as much as you're going to see Briber and Rabble Rouser and uh, Man at Arms. Neither here nor there. Let's go ahead and roll this dice. Twelve. Three dice. Should I make this roll to win? Success and I win. Let's see how it comes up. It is a total of four and seven, eleven, one, twelve. Perfect roll. Perfect roll. Just enough is just enough. Success in the brawl ends. I'm going to say that 2d8 of the opponents of Adam uh, Adam Ivan's uh, uh, parties. Four. Not a great roll, but four. So now the balance of power is 21 of them versus 27 of us if we should have to do this brawl again. But more importantly, I won that battle. And because I won that battle, I get to check Conflict of Arms. Made a little cruddy delta there. Okay, so personal risk and audacity, easy to get, fame, easy to get, and Sea Voyage's maritime training. Oh my gosh, if I can get a climax, that's an easy check as well. I could become level three. I am still, let's see, we're going, we're, we're reaching an hour mark here. I try to break these up, even though I record for maybe an hour, I also got to break up and I got to add some explanation and add some extra pictures afterward. I'll play, I'll play one more counter or two. I'm trying to get out of phase A. And this, this is just too, hun uh, too fun to leave at the moment. So let me go back over here. I'm around Nantes. I'm headed towards Saxony, but I still got two. I got three encounters uh, go through A, B, and C. No, the two. I went to phase B. That could be a perfect time to end it because I went to phase B with that two being treated as a knave, the second knave in the phase. I'm out of my death warrant. And yes, this is a perfect time to end it. To Gabriel, uh, maybe by then he'll get a new set of uh, duds and, and uh, clothing. <laughs> the barge coming at us was empty. The oxen on the side of the river moved at a relaxed pace. That might soon change. Ushnik waved from the shore. His was an elegant solution, and I did not question the methods he used to obtain the barge. It explained his absence from the brawl and apropos return. There was no debate on shifting weight, even as some continued to grumble. The cannon would be moved to the platform, buttressed by bags of sand. A rotation of marines would be stationed there. I could finally commence proper training. The explosion of cannon would keep peasants quite at a distance and set a few farmhouse roofs aflame. Gabriel, Flambeau, Gotrip would all know our heading regardless because of the artillery. The sailors would take turns walking the oxen as needed to pull us across the shallows. Even as the nights were cold and the marines on the barge near froze, snows were melting and the river was rising. For now the wind was favorable north to south and the bell could tow the barge trailing. Somewhere I sensed Das Kappa's smile at the compromise. We were on the Bavarian border, a place of few constables in a land with no central government to collect any excise tax. more later.